So we see an inevitable connection between being called out in the Holy Sabbath convocation and being a part of the ecclesia, the called out ones, okay? So let's look at Strong's Concordance, G1577, pronounced ecclesia. The definition is as follows, a calling out, that is, concretely, a popular meeting, especially a religious congregation, Jewish synagogue or Christian community of members on earth or saints in heaven or both, assembly or church. So what we have is an undeniable parallel of the Sabbath convocation or calling out of God's people and the church being made up of those who are called out from the world, the called out ones, or church, are called out into the holy convocation, the Sabbath. So in short, the true church and the body of Christ are called out into the holy Sabbath day of God. Mm -hmm. The only people on earth that would keep the Sabbath of Yahweh are the people of God, obviously. We are called out into this holy and special meeting with God every seventh day. To be truly called out and be the church as the body of Christ, we must keep the holy Sabbath convocation of God. If you're called out, then you are called into the Sabbath rest. Right? Brotherlamps.com Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be together. Thank you for the time and the technology to do this and why we have it. We appreciate it. And so we ask you to bless us. Give us your Holy Spirit. Guide us into all your truth. Help us understand uh, part two of our study and how to joyfully keep the Sabbath. And we thank you for all that you're doing for us. Thank you that you give your children warning. Just like in the book of Acts where you warn them a famine was coming and it didn't come for 10 years but they immediately started sending donations. And so we appreciate that example, Father, that it is faith that moves in action to the saving of our houses and our souls. So we love you very much, and thank you for being with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. How to joyfully keep the Sabbath. Part 2. Burden Breakers. Um, Okay, so before we begin, we must remember the Sabbath is meant to relieve the burden of life so we can focus on our relationship with God. We must also guard ourselves from robbing those around us from being free of their burdens. God has graciously provided some simple things to keep in mind on how to best relieve these burdens and focus our hearts, minds, and times upon our Heavenly Father. These prohibitive activities are burden prevention 101 from our from God our Father. A lot of people who start Sabbath keeping can get an I can't attitude taking what God intends for positive and burden prevention and turning them into negatives. If we can get our mindset fixed upon the understanding that it is a blessing freeing us from life's burdens and distractions, then the following information will create a sense of relief. That being said, let us continue to learn how to keep the Sabbath. <clears throat> Let's review the Sabbath commandment. Uh, any thoughts or questions before we go? We good? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Exodus 20, 8 through 11. This is the Sabbath commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You shall labor six days and uh, do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath to Yahweh your God. You should not do any work in it. You, nor your sons, nor your daughters, your male servants, nor your female servants, nor your livestock, nor your strangers who is within your gate. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So, you might not know that the commandments are given by God in Exodus and in De Deuteronomy. So, let's recap the, uh, in Deuteronomy and see if we can spot the difference in the emphasis, okay? So, the first one, it was, I created everything, my Sabbath, right? So, that was the emphasis, like, this is a commemoration Sabbath. So, let's read in Deuteronomy 5, 12 through 15. I, I don't know if I said it previously. That was Exodus um, <clears throat> uh what? Uh, 28 through 11. Let's say, okay. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as Yahweh your God commanded you. You shall labor six days and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath to Yahweh your God, in which you shall not do any work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your ox, nor your donkey, nor any of your livestock, nor the stranger who is within your gates, that your male servant and your female servants may rest as well as you. Okay, here's the difference. You shall remember that you are a servant. You were a servant in the land of Egypt, and Yahweh your God brought you out of there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, Yahweh your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Right. So you will notice as God solemnized the Sabbath in Exodus, He really stretched uh, stressed creation and this reason for the Sabbath being made holy. In Deuteronomy, the focus is placed upon remembering our burdens in life, giving them the example of being slaves in Egypt and telling them to remember how horrible this was, contrasting slavery in the world and the Sabbath rest given by God. 
This glorifies his name as the one who provides peace and rest. In Deuteronomy 5.14, it specifically demands that all get to rest as you have received rest. God insists this burden prevention is provided for all living creatures, human and animal, forever. In Deuteronomy retelling, we are told it is a privilege provided to us by God to enjoy freedom from bondage of being servants in the world, it, uh, it being our jobs, relationships, or the like. The followers of Jesus can never be made to be fully subjected in the world. I love that. As our God has granted us a permanent release from perpetual servitude in the world. This is found in celebrating God's creation and creative power by keeping the Sabbath. This is truly how to keep the Sabbath. So we have creation in the first one. That Hey guys, this is all mine. I made it. Let's celebrate. And the second one is like kind of still the same thing. I made it. Take a break. But listen guys, remember what you came out of. Right? Remember that you guys were slaves. You remember how horrible that was, you know? So don't turn around and make other people slaves, right? So, like, as a dad, I have to be very careful not to make my wife work on Sabbath or my kids or inadvertently get them to do things they shouldn't be doing, right? Because that is a sin. Woe unto the person that's helping somebody else break the Sabbath because you're commanding them to do so. That is a huge no-no because not only have you sinned, but you're causing another person to sin. And as a leadership, that's bad, right? And so I have to be very careful on what I tell my kids to do. Like we have to clean up the living room floor for family worship. That's understandable. We're trying to worship and we can't have toys while people are running around dancing and singing and stuff, be tripping, breaking ankles, right? And, but at the same time, you know, I can't be like, go clean your rooms, you know, that can wait, you know, because everybody deserves a break. Okay, any thoughts or questions before we go on? All right, called out. We see that in Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, and Leviticus, the Sabbath institution and the command observed has been consistently restated and empowered by God. Yet in Leviticus, we can see an even greater connection between the body of Christ and the Sabbath of God. This was part of our old study about the mark of the beast, but it really lends it to this study, so I included it, okay? So Leviticus 23.3, let me get a drink. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath of solemn rest, the holy convocation, important word. You shall not do any kind of work. It is the Sabbath of Yahweh in all your dwellings. Mm -hmm. So it says, interesting point. The Sabbath is called a holy convocation. The word used for, uh, here for convocation means called out. Okay? Interesting point. Okay, so Strong's Concordance H4744 pronounced, I ain't going to pronounce it, Mikra. The definition is follows something called out. That is a public meeting, the act, the person, or the place. Also a rehearsal, assembly, a calling, a convocation, and a reading. So Sabbath is a holy convocation, a holy calling out, right? We just read in Deuteronomy, you're being called out of the world, out of slavery, out of servitude, right? You and your family, everything associated to you, all that you own, your family, your kids, your servants, if you have any, your your dog, your cat, everybody, your mule, your oxen, every, everything that is associated to you is being called back out of the world. So every Sabbath, we're being called out to be with God, right? Separated. Okay, this is a very important part. So the Sabbath is a convocation or calling out of God's people. In the New Testament, the word for church is ecclesia, which means called out ones. Right? And so the Sabbath is a holy calling out. The church in the New Testament is called ecclesia, which is called out ones. So we see an inevitable connection between being called out in the Holy Sabbath convocation and being a part of the ecclesia, the called out ones, okay? So let's look at Strong's Concordance, G1577, pronounced ecclesia. The definition is as follows, a calling out, that is concretely a popular meeting, especially a religious congregation, Jewish synagogue or Christian community of members on earth or saints in heaven or both, assembly or church. So what we have is an undeniable parallel of the Sabbath convocation or calling out of God's people and the church being made up of those who are called out from the world, the called out ones, or church, are called out into the holy convocation, the Sabbath. So in short, the true church and the body of Christ are called out into the holy Sabbath day of God. Mm -hmm. The only people on earth that would keep the Sabbath of Yahweh are the people of God, obviously. We are called out into this holy and special meeting with God every seventh day. To be truly called out and be the church as the body of Christ, we must keep the holy Sabbath convocation of God. If you're called out, then you are called into the Sabbath rest. Right. And so obviously, as a believers, we're the only ones that are going to think the Sabbath is anything because we're the only ones related to the one who created it. Mm -hmm. Right. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. Right. And so obviously the called out is to be called into the Sabbath, to be obedient, to separate ourselves from the world. And so in, in this, what we said previously, 
in the study is like it is proof that the world doesn't own us. Right. We do not belong to the world. It's spiritual Egypt. The Bible says so in, in uh, uh, the book of Revelation. And so what we need to do is realize that this blessing of Sabbath keeping is God's way of saying, listen, guys, you're still mine. You don't belong to this place. You're in the world. You're not of the world. You have things to do. You need to work. You need to eat, pay bills. I get that. But at the same time, let's keep it in, in the front of our minds. You belong to me. Right. And we are special. We have a unity here. Right. And so we don't want to break that unity. Uh, thoughts or questions? Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, anybody on on Internet land? Thoughts and questions? Nope. OK. Uh, burden prevention. The following is a list of burden breakers that God has given us to free us from the burdens of life in the world. By being faithful to God's ways, we can keep the Sabbath holy, true and unlock the blessing of God's holy day. We must use a lot. Utilize the burden breakers as we learn how to keep the Sabbath. Give me a drink. Mm. Okay. Number one, uh, top of page four. Don't work as God rested from his work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your God. You shall not do any work uh, in it, you nor so on and so forth. So I broke these up into sections so we can look at them one by one. So obviously we're not to uh, work, right? And so, so God, was he go, was God tired, guys? God wasn't tired, right? No. You know, was Adam and Eve tired? They were just made. I don't think they're tired, right? Was creation tired? No, everything was imperfect. Nobody was tired, right? So what kind of rest are we talking about here, right? It wasn't just a physical. It was a spiritual rest, right? A creative rest, right? For us nowadays, it becomes a physical rest because we're whooped when, it, when Sabbath right. comes around, right? You know, we need it, and God knew this. But at the time, it was a creative rest, a creative power rest. In other words, a time to look back at what has been done, not to do more. Okay, and so this is a commemoration. That's what God did. He looked back at his creation, his children, the entire universe, and go, hey, guys, I made this. This is pretty awesome. Let's let's take a moment. You know, this, this is amazing stuff, guys. This, we're going to just contemplate for a bit, okay? Next one. Don't make anyone work on your behalf, including kids and strangers. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to Yahweh your God. You shall not do any work in it. You, nor your sons, nor your daughters, nor your uh, male servants, nor your female servants. Exodus 20.10. The other one's Exodus 20, 10, 2. And so we're going to talk about that more, April, to your question that you had last week at the end of the study, okay? Uh, <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> okay. And so what does that mean? We, that means people within our gates, we are not there to cause them to work. Not my children, not my dog, my ox, my mule, my wife, or anything. At, so at the very least, I go out of my way to ensure I'm not making them do stuff and so like ariana her her chores during the week is to make the beds for the kids make her bed so she has to do it every single day and uh and then help clean stuff up right and so but on sabbath we don't make her do that either me or melissa will do it because she does it six days a week mm -hmm. she needs a break from that so we will go and take care of it you know and so with my wife she does a lot of cooking during the week so i try to cook more you know i cook breakfast every sabbath and she gets to sleep in and so, uh, you know, so it's one of those things where you try to find ways that people are burdened all week and do those things for them to give them that break, you know, and Melissa tries to do the same thing for me, you know, and tries to take some of the things I normally have to do and she'll just try to do them. Right. And so, and that's what we have to do. We have to look out for each other, not put burdens on one another, try to relieve burdens from each other and to bless one another on that day. Right. To give everybody a break. We all need breaks. Okay. Uh, next one. Don't make your animals work. Yes, even animals get to keep the Sabbath. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to Yahweh your God. You should not do any work in it, nor your sons, daughters, male servants, nor your female servants, nor your livestock, nor a stranger within your gates. Exodus 20, 10. Side note, even, in the, even the land is given a Sabbath year by God. Leviticus 25, 1 through 7. So even the land rests. So, of course, when you're not working on the Sabbath, you're, the land's resting every Sabbath day, right? Nothing's going on from humanity and animal toiling upon it to produce. But every seven years, the land would give, was given a rest by God, right, to be renewed and strengthened. And in that, we can find a little bit of a hint what Sabbath is supposed to do. So if you did, gave the, the land a rest, as all you good gardeners know what happens, nutrients return, right? It becomes more bountiful. The things that grow up fall down and die and go back into the soil to replenish soil. Animals traverse it and fertilize it and stuff. And so what, what does that tell us about Sabbath? What is Sabbath supposed to do to us? It's supposed to revitalize. Yeah, yeah, and put back into us what has been taken out all week, 
right? Mm -hmm. And so if we keep the Sabbath correctly, that's what happens. We get charged up. It's like you said last week, April, that like you get, uh, you have more energy on Sunday because you kept a good Sabbath because you let your body take a break. What's funny is if you, uh, I think they're, uh, uh, I'm going to totally butcher this name and forgive me for this. I'll probably have to put an edit in it. But uh, was it circadian rhythms? Is it circadian rhythms? Mm -hmm. Yeah, where your body naturally every seventh day shuts down. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's why on the weekend, we're like, oh, I'm so tired. It's Saturday. I'm just, well, actually, God built that into you to rest mm -hmm. every seven days. Mm -hmm. Right. And what's funny is even though some cultures, I think like the Jacobins in France and stuff, they tried to change the work week from uh, seven days to 10 days, you know, and that doesn't work because the body is still geared towards seven day cycles right. by God from the very beginning of creation. Right. And so Saturday Sabbath is the day God is, you're slowing down. They say your brainwave goes, activity goes down. Your metabolism slows down. Everything slows down on Sabbath. Like it or not, even if you try to go out and do stuff, your body is still working at less than peak efficiency because it's going into rest mode. It's like computers. We were always allowed to sleep in on Saturday. So right. School on Friday. We were, I mean, we sleep to like noon. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, before we had kids, we'd take we'd sleep in too, but that don't happen too much. <laughs> not these days. <laughs> one day. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, next one. Don't do your own pleasure on Sabbath, okay? If you turn your foot uh, uh, from the Sabbath from doing your pleasure on my holy day, right? So it's confusing. If God is your pleasure, pleasure that is always fine, okay? Any, any discussion about, well, what if you are enjoying doing things with God? You should be. Well, he's saying those things that you do that are outside of God. Like, I like playing a hunting video game, right? Tons of fun. It's clean. It's not rebellious against God. It's just fun. And, uh, you know, but I say, that's my pleasure. That's something for me. That's something I like. Right. And so I, I had a friend, uh, Jeff and he, uh, he's a good, strong Christian guy. And, uh, uh, he wanted to go do something and he was like, well, God, what should I do? Should I go to the mountains or wherever? Two, two options. And God was like, I don't care. He's like, what do you mean? He's here. He's like, well, I'll go with you wherever you're going. I don't care. <laughs> what do you want to do? You know? And so what, what was that? That was God saying, it's okay to have your own desire. Mm -hmm. The things you like, he likes that about you. Like if my kids were just little robots, they're like, what do you want, daddy? <laughs> you know, that'd be so annoying, <laughs> you know? But they're like, dad, can we color? Dad, can we play blocks? Can we do this? Well, that makes it fun. Not of me just walking in the house every day going, we're doing coloring at three, blocks at four. You know, that's not, that's not a relationship. And so God gives us that ability to find things we like. It makes us unique. Mm -hmm. My daughter loves to color and draw. She's a great artist, you know. And so everybody has our own particular flavors of things that make us unique and make us us that God allows us to do. They're not sin, right? They're just things we like. And so when we... Those are our pleasures. So if we could put those things down on Sabbath and focus on his pleasures, the things that please him, the things he enjoys, what brings out his character, what amplifies our time and focus upon him, then that's how we're not doing our pleasure. Okay? Yes, it's pleasurable to be with God. It should be. It should be the highest pleasure. But we shouldn't get into like a mental debate of like which one is like, you know, the right way to look at it. You know, it's okay to have your stuff and God has his stuff. Right. And so I have things I like. It's OK. You know, so I put those things down, though. Like I said last week, I have Christian video games and I don't play them on Sabbath because I can play video games six days a week. Right. And why they're Bible based is they're about God. They actually teach you scripture while you play. It's ridiculous. You know, but to me, I'm like, well, no, I do that enough. You know, I need to do other things today. You know, and focus my, my whole attention on God, not just bleep, bloop, 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 you know, ha ha, smack, 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 <laughs> you know, getting clicky finger. <laughs> uh, any questions on that one? Okay. Uh, don't speak vain words on Sabbath. This one's a hard one, especially for me, especially when I first started keeping Sabbath. If you turn your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight and holy of Yahweh, honorable and child, uh, honor it, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasures, nor speaking your own words. Isaiah 58, 13. That one's a tough one because especially if you're sitting around and just relaxing, you can get in some weird conversations. Like we get into Star Trek conversations sometimes, Star Wars. We're all getting conversations. I'm watching a football game after Sabbath. I mean, just stuff that's totally distracting. And it's one of those things where you just have to go, oh, that can wait. And that's what we do now. We go, oh, that can wait. 
you know, we'll talk about it later. You know, is we don't beat each other up over someone brings up something, you know, about trying to mow the yard or future plans for the yard. Oh, it can wait. We'll talk about it later. You know, so guys, not sitting there with a hammer like you said, one wrong work smack. You know, but it's just one of those things where you have to be like, ah, it can wait. We can, we'll figure it out after Sabbath. No big deal. Moving on. You know, and so if we could train ourselves to like not sit around and talk politics or how like you know football teams or whatever you like to talk about makeup, I don't know. And so and just focus on towards family, God, Christ, studying, worship, these things. Which is really hard to do at first because you're not used to it, you know, and you're trying to retrain yourself. And it's almost like like amputating a leg, it feels like, because you're so geared towards it. But in reality, what's happening is you have become enslaved to the world system. You have been so trained up to think these things and do these things constantly that you don't know how to stop the thing anymore. You know, you don't, so that should be a warning sign. Like if you can't control yourself and you can't just disconnect from it, that should be a huge warning sign that spiritually you're having a complication, an issue that needs to be taken care of. Because one of the fruits of the spirit is Mm self-control, right? So at any point in your day and your time, you should just be able to decide that's the goal through the power of the Holy Spirit of that's a sin. I'm not doing it, or we're not going to talk about it anymore. And it lends itself to, I'm not going to cuss, which was a huge huge problem for me, or I'm not going to get angry, or I'm going to let it go, or I'm going to forgive. We have to have that sense of control through the power of the Holy Spirit to do the things that God wants us to do, right? And so if we can't do that, if we on Sabbath, we're like, we just cannot stop doing what we want to do. That is a huge red red flag. Okay. You know, that means that there's something going on and it's a beautiful warning sign because God wants to help you with it. He wants to encourage you. He wants to help you walk the path, you know, and he's not trying to beat you up. He's trying to help you get better. And so we look at these signs that like, hey, that's, that's an issue, you know? And so like back when um, uh, I started keeping the Sabbath and I was fighting my own desires and then my mom trying to get me to do stuff on Sabbath and I was the only one with the driver's license and my brother wanted me to take him to go to the store to buy cigarettes and stuff like that. It was a huge mess, you know? But at the same time, I learned how to navigate it and I got better at it. And, and I will warn you guys, it might feel like you're losing things and you are. But they're things of the world, okay? You might, I didn't get to, I love Saturday morning cartoons at the time. I didn't get to watch those anymore. Like hanging out with my friend's girlfriend on Sabbath, she didn't want to do the things I was doing, didn't do that anymore. You know, and so, but at the same time, we're exchanging, right? We're putting down the things of the world to receive from God something greater, something bigger, something new. And so if we're willing to make that exchange and invest in that, right? It's not like with the world, like we talked last week, where I can go get high and have all the fun I want, instant gratification. It's long-term investment into God's blessings, you know? And so we have to remember that. And so uh, next one, don't complain. Let no foreigner who has joined himself to Yahweh speak, saying, Yahweh will surely separate me from his people. Do not let the eunuchs say, Behold, I'm a dry tree. For Yahweh says to the eunuchs who keep the Sabbaths uh, and choose the things that please me and hold fast to my covenant. Isaiah 56, 3 through 4. Last one was Isaiah 58, 13. Um, so this is Isaiah 56, 3 through 4. Yeah, I always forget that these become podcasts and people aren't reading what I'm reading, so I have to remind myself. Um, so here's the thing. Sabbath is a day not to complain about your boss, not to complain about your job, not complain about having to mow, which is one of my favorite things to do because I don't like mowing, so I like to complain about mow- not uh, mowing the yard, but whatever. you know. And so it's one of those days where you try to get out of the negative mindset, the grind of life and all the issues. you know. And so like on Sabbath, I don't talk about the world and what's going on much with the family. I try to focus on the more positive things that are more uplifting in the moment and try to do the things that are right you know and so especially in the world and in the work environment where it's always problem solving like there's always a problem to solve or to fix i find myself even to this day trying to figure out how to solve problems for the family for the ministry and all this stuff on sabbath and i always have to remind myself stop that Mm -hmm. let it go and stop you know, because I'll just sit there and just grind over thoughts, you know, and like, oh, how am I going to do this? I need to do that, you know, and it just doesn't end. And so that's a part of self-control, you know, and I'm still learning it, but I'm getting to the point where I can control it and be like, no, stop. We're not doing that right now. We'll think about it later. It can wait. You know, that's all I'll say. It can wait, <laughs> you know. And so as long as we get to the point where we're like, hey, no, nope, breaks, hold every thought captive to Christ, cast every high thought against God down, you know, and just capture it. 
put in a ball, throw it at your head, and move forward, you know, and don't get down on yourselves because you're having issues, you know, because that's the, what the devil wants to do. He wants to make you feel bad, you're right, and just grind on you and make you get discouraged and make you want to give up, right? And so that's all demonic, okay? God is like, nope, you fall. A righteous man falls seven times and gets up all seven, right? And so no matter how many times you fall, as long as you get up, keep walking forward, you'll be fine because God has the grace and the mercy for you, right? And that's what you need to focus on. So this isn't about perfection. We talked about it every almost all the time. This is about a heart of obedience, willing to follow after God and do the things that please Him, right? And then when we fail, He is just and faithful to forgive us, and we just keep moving on. That's it, right? And so we don't let the devil beat us up. We just keep moving on. All right, don't buy food on the Sabbath. So last week we talked about Jesus uh, going to the field to get food and how it's okay to have a garden or crops and or an apple tree and go out and pluck what you need for the day right not a big deal okay but here's the thing don't buy food on the sabbath and this i'll kind of get into this just a little bit here in a second the backstory but let's read and if these people of the land bring wares or any grain on the sabbath day to sell that we would not buy from them on the sabbath or on a holy day and that we would forego the seventh year and the exact uh, exaction of every debt nehemiah 10 31 and so what happened was on sabbath Basically, the Jews, since they wouldn't work and go out and do other things, they had retailers that would come into the city and sell them stuff on Sabbath. That's ridiculous. And that's what was going on is like people pulling up with their taco truck. You know, oh, you don't have to work. I'll take care of it. That's 15 shekels, please. You know, and so, and that's what was going on. And so, this that's what's the next one. Don't sell food on the Sabbath. In those days, I saw in Judah... Some men trading wine presses on the Sabbath, bringing in the sheaves and loading donkeys, also with the wine, grapes, figs, and all kinds of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified it against them in the day in which they sold the food. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah 13, 15. Uh, and if you want the whole thing, it's 13, 15 through 22. And so what happened was here is that they basically, to the point is like, I don't, I'm about to give it away. But anyways, they were like, we can't do this, guys. And so you, if you're keeping the Sabbath, you shouldn't be making other people do your work for you. It's ridiculous. That's one thing as production manager and operations manager for companies, I never and would never schedule somebody to work up until sunset Friday night and never on Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I had that control. I ain't doing it. Everybody deserves Sabbath. They didn't realize what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell them why, you know, uh, and so, but I just would ensure it. And then when I would schedule works to get jobs done and out, I would always schedule around the Sabbath. We might come in Sunday, but everybody would always have the Sabbath, right? And far be it for me to make somebody work at their job on Sabbath. That's a horrible, horrible thing to do. And so, and it's a, not only an offense to them, to yourself, but it also is to God. So we need to avoid that. Um, so here's the thing. We're back at the, they're bringing in food. They're selling. The Jews think it's a great idea because they're not having to work, but they're still buying but, you know, and so here's what it says. Don't bring any burden upon the Sabbath from the outside world. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded that the door should be shut and commanded they should not be opened until after the Sabbath. I set some of my servants over the gate so that no burden should be brought in on the Sabbath day. Nehemiah 13, 19. And so what happened was, is Nehemiah was, uh, or the prophets were like, okay, guys. We're not doing this anymore. Shut the doors. But what does that mean to us, right? Mm -hmm. So I found out, and I told Angel this, that, you know, you can actually schedule your UPS packages and FedEx. So I we found out that uh, uh, for UPS, Amazon, and all this other stuff, you can actually schedule them for not to deliver on Sabbath. Did you know that? If you go into your options, you can say no Saturday delivery. That's so cool. Right. And even on Friday nights, you can say nothing after this time. Right, and so even that you can tell FedEx in the world to stay away, and then who just bought a piece of furniture that? Oh, Sarah, you bought. Tell them about what you bought that keeps the Sabbath. A dishwasher. She bought a dishwasher that keeps the Sabbath. Tell them about it. Okay, let's hear this. In the owner's manual, it has a Sabbath button, and you can what? press it, and. No one would be able to start it. <laughs> That's so cool. I've never what? seen it before. Yeah. No. I was mind boggled. I, I know a guy who bought a refrigerator that did the same thing. You push the Sabbath button, and then the whole refrigerator will shut down and not run, but oh. will stay cold for the Sabbath. You just open it up, 
And then when Sabbath's yeah. over, it I kicks back. Going to well, it depends on how you look at it. I knew a guy who who unplugged his phone and turned off his electricity. That might be kind of cool. Right. I mean, everything would ruin in my refrigerator. Yeah. Right. But either way, it's it's kind of an anecdotal, you know, funny thing. But you know, it's kind of neat. You know, now if you could do that with your Xbox and you know that kind of stuff, <laughs> so have, have your Xbox have a Sabbath button. No video games. <laughs> Temptations off your TV. That'd be awesome. <laughs> right. Right. Internet. But anyways. <laughs> I thought that was kind of neat. Okay, so uh, so we don't want to bring in burdens, right? And so, like, when people, like, want to come, and which we'll talk about later, too, but, like, I wouldn't let AT&T come to my house on Sabbath to work on my phone lines. Mm-hmm. You know, I just told them, no, it ain't happening. You can go away, you know, and come back if you like. But, um, you I've know. I've to do that many times now. It's weird because sometimes they say, well, we can only be out there on Saturday, and you have to wait till next week, and it's like, oh, Okay, well, we'll do it next week. All right, then next week it is. Big deal. You know, we'll, life will go on. And so, but yeah, it's kind of weird, especially having those conversations with people aren't aren't Sabbath keepers. They're like, what? Mm-hmm. You know, because they're, they're entrained in the world. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, don't carry forth a burden out of your house on the Sabbath day. Don't carry a burden out of your the houses on the Sabbath day. Do not do any work, but make the Sabbath day holy as I commanded your father, Jeremiah seventeen twenty two. So what does this mean? So like it's, we use the example one time of going to church. You're bringing your potluck. You're bringing your kids stuff. You're bringing your Bibles. You're bringing all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But, right, you don't have to bring... That day, because if you obviously didn't prepare on the preparation day, you don't have to go fill your car for after Sabbath activities too, right? You don't have to like, well, after Sabbath, we're going to the movies, then we're going to go to the beach, and we're going to play volleyball, so I need to get the volleyball net and the stands. And, you know, well, there's a preparation day for that, right? You should have prepared. But on Sabbath, he's saying, as we talk, needs for the day, but you don't have to go out of your way to, like, try to do the needs for Sunday and the needs for Monday and Tuesday, you know. And so hopefully we're wise enough and trained enough that we prepare on Thursday night to Friday to do all that prep stuff. And then when we leave on Sabbath, it's literally get up, walk out the door, and you're off to Sabbath, you know, and do whatever you're doing. And so we have to be very careful with that. And so especially with the day we live in, it's easy to get bogged down in needs and cares. But um Next one. Don't pollute, profane, or harm the Sabbath. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath without profaning it. Isaiah 56, 2a. And so instead of profane it is to offend it or to do something bad or against it, right? Non uh, celebratory observation of God's awesome holy power and resting in your in his presence, basically. Don't practice evil. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath without profaning it and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Isaiah 56, 2. So why is that? So we know evil would be sin, right? Mm -hmm. But God is adding an extra layer here. He's not just saying don't sin. Obviously, you don't want to sin. He's saying don't sin on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. I mean, why is that? Because the Sabbath is special to him. It's his day. It's his commemorative work, right? So he's saying, Sabbath, if we sit on Sabbath willfully, intentionally, like, God, I don't care, I'm doing it anyways, then that's a whole nother level of insult to God, mm-hmm. right? Because he's saying, listen, guys, I'm making a breach in the spiritual realm to get closer to you mm-hmm. so we can commune and you're going to offend me by, like, you know, going and doing something you know you're not supposed to be doing. You know, and so we have to avoid that at all costs because we are sacrificing and killing and slaughtering our own blessing from God. Mm -hmm. Because I promise you guys, God will bless you more than the world can. Mm -hmm. And we have to get out of the idea of like, we have to do this X, Y, Z. I was talking to Kim last night and she's like, well, if they came to my door to vaccinate me, well, you got to do it. I was like, stop right there. You're a child of God. You're made in in God's image. You always have a choice. You have the power and authority of the, the words of God. Right. I rebuke you. Leave my property in Jesus' name. Right. And that will scare people that are not God-fearing people. Right. You're right. And so you have the power to make a choice. You always have a choice. Don't ever let yourself feel you don't have a choice. You just have to be willing to pay the price for that choice. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And so in every relationship, every marriage, every business, everything, you have power. What you do with it. Right? So don't ever get to yourself where, like, I don't have a choice. I have to. Do- no, you don't. Right. And God will reward you for the right decision. Right. He will. He definitely will. Mm-hmm. And bless you. It doesn't mean there won't be a sacrifice up front. Mm-hmm. But in the long term, hundredfold press down, overflowing this life and next, God will take care of it. Right? Mm-hmm. And so, but we want all of our blessings now. We don't want to lose anything now. We want to keep everything we have now because we work so hard for it, which is understandable. <laughs> right? But at the same time, we don't realize that the blessing to come in heaven is way, way greater. 
you know, and I guarantee you, I promise you, I, mark my words, it's in history now. God's going to watch this. I promise you, when you get to heaven, you're going to say, I wish I did more. Mm -hmm. Every one of us, no matter how much we do, we're all going to say, I wish we did more. I wish I obeyed more. Isn't it all about me and R the way I wanted my life to Right. And say, I wish I would have sacrificed more, talked about God more, prayed more. Because once we get to see how awesome heaven is and the blessing we, we have. So right now, you guys are, are getting treasures in heaven. Right? You're doing things for God. You're getting blessed now for God. There's a day where no work can be done. It's coming. And after that, there's no more payment for that work. Your reward will be your reward, and that'll be it for all eternity, mm -hmm. right? And that's all you'll ever have from him concerning your efforts here on earth, okay? And so we have this time to work for God and do things for God and get right with God and sacrifice and obey. And after that, that door shuts and you're done, right? And so at the end of our lives, we'll all look back after we're in heaven and think of what we could have done, how we could have done better, how we could align, how we could have given up our own selfish desires to please God, right? And so the more we do that now, our, your future self is thanking you already, I promise you. Your future you in heaven, the glorified body, right, is going, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for doing it right because now I understand Right. So I know the future means like, Lance, you did well, but you should have done more, <laughs> you know. And so uh, that's the goal. And so I, I don't want to leave what they say. You leave money on the table. Right. Poker. Right. I don't want to leave money on the table. I want to get everything I possibly can in the next life. Who doesn't. Right. And God gives it as a motivation. Jesus said, store up your treasure in heaven. Right. That's a motivation. People are like, well, you just want treasure in heaven. Well, yes. I mean, who in the right mind gives that as a motivation and then tries to make you feel bad for trying to do it? That doesn't make sense. And so we want to store up our treasure in heaven, do the things for God now, please him and honor him now here on earth. And in return, God blesses for it. Right. And that's the economy of heaven. Praise God for that. So I promise you guys, whatever you sacrifice, whatever you do, whatever you give up, whatever relationship, whatever uh, job, whatever situation you have that is going to be affected by being obedient to Christ, you'll get repaid, right? You know. Okay, so uh, question and answer. This goes to the, uh, one of uh, April's questions earlier. Uh, real quick, any thoughts or anything before we go to Q&A? That's awesome. Well... Yes, you answered my other one earlier, but then this one down here, where in the Nehemiah thirteen nine, when you were talking about, you know, he said, "I sent my servants to the gate." Didn't he force them to work? Uh, Nehemiah. Boo, 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 boo. So, uh, uh, which like, one? Yep. Oh, I'm trying to figure out where. You, uh, that's Jeremiah. Nehemiah. Middle of page five. Oh yeah. Uh, sorry. Whew, I don't. Nehemiah 13. Uh, thir oh, okay. I thought you said 31. Yeah, okay. So here's the thing. Um, Ministry-wise, we talked about this last week, all the priesthood still worked. Ministers still work on Sabbath. We talked about that Why? last Because they're there to facilitate the communion with God. That, that service never ends. So as a minister, which we talked about last week, you, they still sacrificed back then. They still made fires. They still did the things. And they opened and closed the gates. They blew the shofar. They did all the ministerial work. Right? That's why Jesus says it's always lawful to do good on the Sabbath. It is lawful to be the bridge between God and man as a minister. That part never ends. So if they were there, yeah. if they were going so to... What? Go if they're, sending them to the gates was them enforcing God's rule. Right. Exactly. Okay. To ensure that God's ways are being kept. And that was the job of the Levites, the Levit Levitical priesthood. And so they never got a day off? Basically, no. They would cycle. And so they, they would cycle a post. They would cycle. And so, yes, they were able to keep Sabbaths, but it would just cycle. And so if you look into the genealogies of who got to be priest and who got to be high priest, it all cycled. And so you would have, uh, I think it was six months in the city and six months out of, out of the city to go and work, do other jobs. And so, but they got days off, but it wasn't like the most, the rest of the people. They got every Sabbath off, you know. And so that's why pastors and stuff, they work Sabbath. You know, it is it's their job. It's their, what they do every single day, you know. And so for like me, like this last Sabbath, I thought, oh, I'm going to get a break and then wind up having to talk to people online all day, you know, about God and the Bible and help them try to get things straight in their own brains, you know. And so it just happens that way, and, you know. And so I can't be mad about it because that's what I'm called to do, 
you know and so yeah. but like god was like friday i was d desperately needing a break on friday and god was like no you're not taking a break today i want you to work on that sabbath video i showed you guys so i, I started doing that right and then cam monday or tuesday about noon god was like i want you to take a break now okay so i took a break <laughs> i'm like whatever you say lord that's uh, that's what he's trying to teach me right now that i need to get yeah. out of my own programming and my own scheduling and be flexible you know, and so he's trying to teach me that. And so, uh, you know, especially as a minister. That confuses me because you can't just take a break when you want to take a break. Well, it's different for the individual and different from the minister, and that's the point. Oh. The minister has a different calling and a different responsibility. And so if you're going to minister okay. for the Lord, you're, it's like the military. You know what I mean, that's what it says in Timothy, that, you know, you don't get entangled with the affairs of the life to please the one who called you, right? And so you have to work as a good soldier, and that's what it is. It's like, okay, like last night, I didn't really feel like 8 o'clock going to my neighbor's house and talking to them. But I really felt like God saying, you need to do that now. So I did. You know, and that's basically how it works, you know. But God is wise. He knows what we need to be doing when we need to be doing. I trust him in it. And even if I feel f totally exhausted, God was like, I'll give you a rest. You just keep doing what I'm telling you to do. Because we have to realize as a minister, there's spiritual windows opening and closing all the time, right? And so when the window opens, you have to strike when the iron's hot. Mm -hmm. And so I can't be like, no, Lord, I'm tired. No, God was like, no, you need to go do this. This is the opportunity I have. Uh, angels and spirits and spiritual power in place to make this uh, a moment available to you. You need to do it now, and then yeah. so you you go and do that. And now. what what is ministering and teaching? Isn't it the fruit, or is it the? That's a gift of the spirit. Yes. Yeah, and then there's fruits of the spirit. Yeah, and so yeah, it's one of the uh, gifts, you know. And so. So isn't that what you should basically do on the Sabbath? Is your fruits and your gifts? Yeah, hopefully you're doing it all your all your life. But yeah, especially when you come together in congregation and you have the gift, uh, like a gift of tongues or a gift of uh, uh, healing or any of these gifts, then yeah, you want to celebrate. You want to give that gift to the congregation. You know, but it's, it's different. Yeah, but it, like I said, for the minister though, the pastor, the person walking over the over the flock, be like, "Hey, your life's going told the pots. I don't care. Goodbye. It's Sabbath. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't work. You know, and so you have to be on call. It's basically it. That's why I always try to like. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I always try to respond to you as fast as humanly possible. I don't let your text build up. I always keep my phone on unless I just near need the focus on God. I try to respond to every group me, every text, everything you guys ever send me. I try to answer it right away because it's important that it's answered right away and not made you guys wait. Right. And so it doesn't mean I always can do that. But the majority of the time, that's the goal. Right. Because, again, there's spiritual opportunity, windows opening, and you have to access the window. So, like, as a minister, I can't be like, OK, I don't want to talk to anybody. I'm fried. It doesn't work that way. You know, and so, uh, so go ahead. I, I guess my question is, is back to what we were talking about last week uh -huh. when Chad went to go help his dad. Wouldn't upholstery be a gift? And he was also with his dad building a relationship. So I don't see how that is wrong to do on the Sabbath. Okay, let's do this questions and answers and we'll come back to that. Because we, okay. we have these two questions and answers, and we'll come back. Okay? Question. Yep. Uh, the following are very practical questions on how to keep the Sabbath. At the bottom of page five, we read, If I'm not supposed to buy, sell, or trade, or make others work on the Sabbath, then am I breaking the commandment by using electricity, phone service, and water on the Sabbath? Especially if you live in a city. Answer. Oh, yeah. I believe we find the answer in the commandment. Let's read Exodus 20, 10. Uh, but, uh, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your God. You shall not do any work in it, nor your sons, nor your daughters, nor your male servants, nor your female servants, nor your livestock, nor your stranger who is within your gates. As we see it, with what happens within your gates, that is the dividing line. As the electricity company and all other utilities are outside of your gates and property and are not 
and you are not on a daily payment arrangement, which I knew a guy who was, but a monthly payment cycle, I believe you are still faithful in Sabbath keeping. Yeah, I know some people to turn off their electricity and unplug their phones on Sabbath, though this doesn't always make a lot of sense to me, as they are still buying the service since they are on a monthly payment arrangement. They're just not using it. Plus, if you're renting or buying a house, you're still incurring an expense every day, though you pay it for once a month. So I don't see how you could be freed from this, not to mention property taxes, etc. The takeaway is this. If the services are being produced outside your gates property and you pay for them monthly or bi-weekly not daily then i believe you're faithfully keeping the sabbath with that being said do as the lord leads you to do you know and so you know I'm, there's probably some personal conviction in there but the bible clearly says within your gates so that's why we don't let the electric company come to our house on sabbath or the internet company or the at&t or the plumber or any of these other things right and so uh you know it's just one of those ways and it's life is getting even more ridiculously complicated and you know i think it's the devil's trick against us but uh does that make sense to the guys trying to keep people out of your gates yeah yeah, okay. Yep. Next one. Are are we not allowed to heat our houses on the Sabbath? In Exodus 35, 3, it says, You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations on the Sabbath day. As we read, the prohibition was not against having a fire to keep warm. It was against the work of running around trying to find wood to make one. See Numbers 15, 32 through 36. And this should and could have been done six days a week by anyone in the family. And on top of that, you could also go and enjoy the warmth of your neighbor's fire. We see in the temple every Sabbath they had fires for the burnt offerings. See Numbers 28, 9 through 10. Therefore, every Sabbath they had fires going. The fire was not the issue. It was the labor of getting one started. This is why we have a preparation day to prepare everything in advance. And believe me, if you get into some knowledgeable debates with people about the sabbath who people who actually kind of know the bible they'll bring this point up to you and so it's good information to have um next one do ministers of the gospel break the sabbath by working on the sabbath no it is lawful to do good on the sabbath day jesus says jesus and disciples customs to teach on the sabbath the priesthood still had to work in the temple so for the ministers of the gospel there is no day when he cannot minister okay and so what we're going to do now is we're going to pray, and then we can do some future questions and answers, because I think Chad has to run here in a minute. So, uh, Daniel, we're going to pray real fast. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for our study. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for helping us to understand that you just desire to take and alleviate our burdens in life, to give us freedom and opportunity to do that which pleases you, not ourselves, and that in this we learn self-control, fruits of the Spirit, and then we can glorify you and, and, and enjoy fully your presence without distraction. So we love you very much, and we thank you for taking care of us. And bless the week ahead of us. Help us have a wonderful Sabbath. Protect us from the craziness that is the world today, and put a hedge of angels around us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, Chad, are you still If back? you feel so led of the Lord and want to know how to donate to this ministry outreach, please visit brotherlance.com and scroll down to the bottom of the main page for the PayPal link. Thank you. And may God's blessing rest upon you. BrotherLamps.com